Okay, when you're talking about forces, you can't forget good old Newton's laws of motion. Isaac Newton, amazing, amazing intellect. He observed things and he intuited things, and he came, we've already seen his universal law of gravitation, and these are his three laws of motion, okay? Three laws of motion. One of them, now I've rephrased this in my own words, objects resist changing. I think that's the easiest way to describe it. They keep on moving or staying still unless they are literally forced to change. By forced, we mean force. So a short way of saying that is inertia. An object that is moving, an object that is moving, it's just going to keep on moving unless you do something to it. An object that is standing still is going to stay like that until you move it. Okay, It's kind of obvious, but he observed this very carefully and he saw that this was true. So basically, objects resist a change. If they're moving, they keep on moving. If they're not moving, they keep on not moving. And that is inertia. Inertia is related to momentum. So when an object is rolling along, it has momentum, and then it's kind of, oh, you have to stop it. You have to, it's kind of harder to stop it. Okay, that's related, but inertia applies in both circumstances, whether it is still or moving. So that's the quickest way to describe Newton's first law with that one word, inertia. Look, this is called Newton's cradle. It's uh, broken. My children actually broke this one. Ian! So if you don't do anything to them, they just stay like this, not moving, of course. But if you do, if I increase the potential energy of these two balls, well then releasing them, it'll turn into kinetic energy, and that will impart force when they collide, and then we'll see how long that they keep on moving. An object in motion remains in motion. Now the only thing about this is that they are losing a little bit of energy each time to heat, and so basically it dies down. But if it wasn't for that, they would just keep on moving. An object wants to keep on keeping on, wants to keep doing whatever it is doing. So if it's standing still, it wants to stay that way unless it's acted on by an outside force, a net force, which causes it to move. If it's moving, it wants to keep moving unless it's acted on by an outside force to change its motion. Or maybe with enough to stop it. An object at rest will remain at rest unless acted on by an outside Mjolnir force. An object in motion will stay in motion unless it's acted on by an outside force. Maybe forces, which can bring it back to a rest. Newton's second law can be stated F equals MA. It's really, that's the best way to say it. So the force, the net force really, that is imparted is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Another way to write it is like this. This is just rearranging the equation. So the more force, the more acceleration. Okay, the more mass, the less acceleration. Think of it that way. So if you want to accelerate something, it's a lot easier if the mass is small. If the mass is large, it doesn't go as far. Okay? So a low mass object, a low mass object is going to be accelerated a lot farther by the same force. Oh, it's magnetic. Okay, there we go. That's basically what this is saying. So if you put the same force on to two different masses. This one's more massive, big shot put. This one is less massive, small shot put. Okay, put the same force on those two objects. Well, the one with a lower mass, the one with the lower mass is gonna have a greater acceleration. Okay. And the same thing goes with these. If you put the same force on these two objects, same force, then the one with the lower mass would have the greater acceleration. That's basically what this says. So I'm going to hit both of these shot puts with about the same amount of force with baby Mjolnir 
You don't have to be quite as worthy. It doesn't have quite the same bar as regular Mjolnir. And I'm gonna go from about here in and hit them and we'll see how far they go. I'll do them one right after the other. Ready, set, ready, set. There's a little bit of a slip. Lighter. Mm -hmm. So notice how with the same amount of force, the smaller one goes further, it got a greater acceleration. And then of course, it slowed due to the friction with the ground. Yeah. So now he's gonna push them both the same amount at the same time, go. Ooh, hopefully that doesn't damage the wood. Newton's third law is that for every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction, okay? So you can see that exhibited all over the place on this table. Let's look at an example of this. If I put this sphere on top of this aluminum foil drum that I made, well, it's going to be pushing downward because of the force of gravity. The weight of the object is pulling it downward. But the aluminum foil is having a reaction to that, it's not letting it fall, it's not falling down to here, it's stopped there because there is an opposite force counterbalancing the gravity. Now that will be the case unless the object was too heavy for the aluminum when it could no longer counter it. That force has a very special name, it is called the normal force. So when we call something the normal force, it doesn't mean that it's just happening all the time and we're used to it. Okay? It has to do with the 90 degree angle, or I guess I should do it this way, the 90 degree angle. Okay? 90 degree angles, well that comes from an old Latin word, the word norma, okay, which literally means a carpenter's square. So if you have a carpenter's square, those are always at right angles. That's how they measure the edges of a room, that's how they make sure that everything is nice and square and, and that they can build the building correctly. So the word normal, people don't realize it originated with this word for carpenter square. So originally in that word normal, it just meant sort of upstanding, like an upstanding citizen was at 90 degrees, like standing up straight, not slouching, okay? Perpendicular, okay? In conformity with the rule, normal. And then it, eventually the word evolved into how we use it today, okay? Normal is just what most people are like. So I guess if most people were crazy, then normal would be crazy. Oh well. So normal originally meant 90 degrees, and that is how we use it in physics. So this is pushing down that way, but the aluminum foil is pushing back with what we call a normal force. So if gravity is going that way, the normal force is pushing back. So the normal force always pushes at 90 degrees to the surface so if the surface is flat, that's great because it's straight up. And then if the surface is inclined, like if you tilt the surface, well, it's still at 90 degrees. It's still pushing that way, 90 degrees to the surface, so it remains. So that's the trickier part. But when it's this way, it's kind of easy. When it is a flat surface, the normal force pushes straight back up. It's what prevents things from falling further down. So this surface, is obviously exerting normal force upon all of these things, all of these, because they're not falling through. The only time when the normal force fails us is if an object, oh, it didn't work, it didn't happen there. If an object breaks through it, well then it didn't, it wasn't able to supply enough normal force to stop the force of gravity. So that's the only time when the normal force fails us. So a quicker way of saying Newton's third law is action, Reaction. If you push, then something pushes back. I'm pushing on the surface, it's pushing back on my hand. I can kind of feel it. It's kind of hurting my hand. It's not just a one-way street. It's a two-way street. If you push, things push back. And then, of course, Newton's cradle shows this as well, because, of course, every time these push, the one they're hitting pushes them back. So you can see them bounce off. That's why things bounce. 
is when you hit a surface, it bounces off. Well, why is that bouncing? Because the surface is pushing back. Okay, equal opposite reactions. Push. Okay, who's going to push? Oh. Now let, let Ian push really hard. Okay. Ian, you gotta bend your knees more. Okay. Lucy, and don't hold on to his chair. Okay. Ready, set, go. <laughs> it's hard for him to move you, right? That's horrible. Okay, push, Ian. <laughs> well, you decide which one. Push one into the other and see what happens. Okay. Okay, try it the other way. So notice how that was moving fast, but that one's moving slower. Now you're going to roll them together. Go. Interesting. Action, reaction. Action, reaction. I'll have this one going faster. Okay, and now this one going faster. And then they're at the same speed, at the same velocity. So the first law is resisting change, inertia. The second law is the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. The third law is action-reaction. For every action, there is a reaction.